Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got for you this super beautiful look that I am low-key obsessed with. We'll be doing a hand-painted bright neon feather. We've got some glitter press, some ombre, some bling application. So basically all the techniques are in this video, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys what products I'll be using. They will all be Beatles products almost entirely. While I am doing that, I just wanna remind you guys to please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on any of my videos. I will have my huge giveaway winner announcement coming up early next week, probably Wednesday. So make sure your bell is rung so you'll get that notification and see if you're one of the winners. So I know that this does look like a lot of product I'm using here, but really we are going to be using all shades from the Perfect 20 set and then a couple shades from another set. So of course everything will be linked down in the description box below. So if you guys want to see exactly what it is I'm using today, that'll be linked down there for you. So I'm starting off by applying the black gel polish on the middle finger and the ring finger. I'm gonna do two coats of this polish. While I'm doing that, I just wanted to note that the poly gel that I'm doing this on top of, this was a set that I did. It's a Beatles poly gel kit as well. And that video will be my next video. So keep your eyes out for that so you guys can see the really popular, kind of newer, all-inclusive poly gel kit from Beatles because it's got literally everything that you need to do some bomb nails, including nail art products. So you don't wanna miss that one. So again, I'm just going to be using the black polish. I'm going to coat both these nails, put it in the lamp to cure, and then I will do my second coat. After I'm done there, I will be back to show you the next step. So after curing those, once again, I am just using my palette ring and a couple of the colors of gel polish that I'd shown you previously. I'm mixing custom colors for all of my ombre nails, so I will have it all listed in the description exactly which numbers I used for which mixes. So I'm using my ombre brush to paint on the polish. It does work nicely for that. And I'm bringing it down on a diagonal until just about the halfway mark. just going to carry that pink down as far as I want it to be. Then I'm going to clean my brush and I will go into my custom mixed yellow, which is actually more of like an orange almost. It's like a orangey yellow. <laughs> so I'm just going to paint that right up to meet exactly where the pink is. Then I will clean my brush again and I will start going back and forth with rapid motions, but feather light strokes. You'll see here in just a second exactly what I mean. I knew there wasn't quite enough pink there to make the ombre really blended well. So I just am adding a little bit more before I go in and do the blend. Cleaning my brush once again, and now I'm going in with rapid motions. 
left to right, left to right, left to right, just back and forth, back and forth across the nail, very, very gently. If you press too hard, you will get lines from your brush in that polish. Once I'm satisfied with the blend, I give it a cure and I go in for my second layer. The great part about this technique is that the layers are so thin, so if you don't like the blend, you can continue adding layers until you do. For instance, on my pinky nail, I didn't like the blend after the second coat, so I did a third and that perfected it and it really gave me the look that I was desiring. So just keep working it until you're happy. Also, when I go in to do my ombre, I am letting my brush travel a little up more into the pink and then a little more down into the yellow. I'm not just staying right in the center where those colors meet. So I know it's hard to see that here, but like right now I'm going a little farther into the pink. Now I'm bringing it down a little farther into the yellow. And then before I go back up into that pink, I wipe my brush off just to make sure that I'm not going to lose the colors. If I continue working back up into the pink, back down into the yellow, it's just going to become very muddied. So I allow the brush to go up into the pink, down into the yellow. If it still needs to be blended more, I wipe off my brush and do it again. Now I'm just mixing up my colors for the pinky and basically I continue adding colored polish until I get the look that I wanted. So with this, I wanted it to be kind of like a green blue. So at first it was a little too blue, so I added a drop more green. Then it was a little bit too green and it was honestly a little too light, so I added a little more dark blue. Just keep doing that, adding a little bit of each color. I would say like one drop at a time, just to make sure that you're getting the right color that you're looking for and you're not overwhelming it with one shade. Because of my artist background, I'm really good at mixing colors. I understand the theory behind it, and so it makes it very easy for me to know what I need to do to mix the color that I'm wanting. Honestly, guys, if you have red, blue, and yellow, you can mix any color under the sun. Literally any color. Oh, white and black as well. You need white and black. <laughs> So I'm just going in with this lighter yellow, and this one's a lot more yellow than the one I did on the pink and orangey yellow nail. This is more of like a lemon yellow, and the other one was more of like an orange yellow. So again, just bringing that down on the diagonal until about the halfway mark, cleaning off my brush, and then going back and forth with very light motions. For some reason, where the pinky was sitting for me in relation to like my body, it was really hard for me to get like feather light touch it with this. I ended up leaving a, the brush marks in the color a few times. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on camera or not, possibly, but it was, it was not as easy as the pink and orange. So don't get frustrated, just keep working it. And then like I said, just continue adding layers. I also find when I do get brush strips strokes leaving streaks in the gel oh my gosh that's a tongue twister when i've got lines left in my gel from my brush i kind of like let it sit before i cure it because it will almost level out and smooth itself a little bit so if you do end up with streaks because it's hard to get that really light touch like it was for me on this nail then just let it sit and continue adding layers until you've got the look that you're wanting. I think I only showed two layers on here, but I did end up doing three. So one more custom mix, purple and blue. Going to put this on the nail in the exact same way. 
that I did with the previous ones. So I'll let you guys watch this and I'll be back with you when it's done. I will say I could not show my ombre blend with this. The way that I had to hold my brush, it was my hand was right in front of the camera. So sorry about that, guys. But hopefully you understand what I did just based on the other nails. So. Okay, now I'm going to use a long, thin striping brush, and I'm going to start with my feather. I'm really loading the brush up in the white gel polish to make sure that I have good control over the brush and that I have enough product in it that it's going to flow smoothly off of the brush, but not too much to where it's going to create a mess on the nail. So I put down that center spine of the way I want the feather to flow. And then I go in with my individual little like feather like hairs. I always do some that kind of are very short and fluffy above the rest. Because if you look at a real feather, they have that. They have that fluff that kind of goes in the opposite direction as the rest of the feather. Then I use my brush to uh, kind of pull from that center spine and kind of flick and curve out away from the spine. You want the lines to be a, just a tiny bit thicker at that spine, that line that goes down the whole length of the feather. And then they come and taper out into a really nice point at the tip. And you get that look by having the correct amount of product on your brush. There's no big drop on my brush when I'm doing this. And you get it by doing that flicking motion. On this one, it was a little hard for me to get that point in the direction that I needed these little feathers to face. So I turned my brush around and brought it back just to make sure that that edge was nicely pointed. So I'm gonna let you guys watch while I do this and I will be back shortly. I know this looks really messy right now, but you guys saw the finished look. It looks great in the end. And I decided I wanted one line that kind of almost curved the opposite direction as them, which is what I'm applying right now. Just that one little swoopy hair that didn't curve with the rest of the feather. Because again, that is something that you sometimes see in nature, so. Not that this is a realistic feather or anything, cause you know, I don't know, rainbow parrot feather or something. <laughs> So once I've got that how I like it, I cure it for 30 seconds. These gels do cure for 60 seconds, but I'm going to be pressing my pigment, pigment into it and we want it to be sticky and grasp onto that pigment. So I only cure it for 30 seconds. 
Then I'm using a little makeup sponge. You can get them at the dollar store, Walmart, just wherever. It's a cheap makeup sponge. And I'm dipping into my pure pigment powders and tapping onto the feather. Then I'm gonna go back and flip back around to the yellow section and kind of rub into the pink so it creates that orange for me. I'm rubbing back and forward like left to right, and then I'll rub a little bit up and down as well. And I'll continue back and forth between the yellow and the pink until I get that blend into the orange the way that I want it to look. These pigment powders are glow in the dark, so hopefully I'll be able to capture a good little video for you guys to show you how they glow. I did get these off of Wish, so I will have it linked in the comments for you guys, or in the description for you guys because it was like three bucks and it's like this tower of pigment and it makes nail art so much fun and so easy. So doing the same thing with the blue, just applying it right where I want it, blending it back and forth between the blue and the pink and it's creating a purple. Once I get that blended into the purple the way that I want it, I'll apply some more blue and then some green at the tip and blend those as well. So I'll let you guys watch and I'll be back at the next step. Right, so now that that is done, when I apply the pigments, it does leave some color all over the black background. And I don't like how that looks. I feel like it makes the feather a little bit less detailed and less vibrant. So I'm just using a cleanup brush with some alcohol on it. And I make sure that I dab it off first so that it's not gonna go flooding all over my nail because if it's too wet, it will run on top of your feather and then you're gonna lose your pigment from the feather or it's gonna run down the nail. It's not gonna be a fun time. So make sure you, you dip it in the alcohol and you dab it off first. Then you can go in and clean up your black background so that your feather will really pop right against it. Look at that in the UV light there. Oh! I love it. That was that glow in the dark effect. Um, it's UV activated, of course. So when it goes under the light, oh, it's just gorgeous. It's been a while since I said that. Eh? <laughs> I'm applying a matte top coat here. This nail will be shiny in the end, but before I go back in and apply the white details, I cover it in matte top coat just to make sure that my pigment is protected and that I'm not gonna be messing it up when I go back in with this white gel polish. So to me, adding the details, the trick for me is that less is more. If I go in and add a whole bunch of white little wisps, you're going to lose the vibrancy of that background. You're not going to be able to see it as much. So I do the spine running down the center of the feather, and then I pull a few little hairs off to the side in that same shape as the feather in the background and it's i know it's hard to stop but you gotta trust me on this one you gotta stop because <laughs> less is more when it comes to this part of the design I'll be better with you, you, I'll be better with you, you, now that I got it. Just fixing up that spine one last time and then I cured that for 60 seconds. Now I'm applying my matte top coat to my ombre nails. Then I will apply a glossy top coat to my feather nail and I will be applying a gel 
base coat onto my full black nail so that I can do my glitter press. So now that I've had the other nails fully cured with their top coat to protect them from any glitter fallout, I'm using that gel base just like I mentioned before on the black nail. I'm using gel base because this will cure tacky. Then I'm taking the Resolution Glitter by Young Nails and a fluffy small brush and I am tapping that onto the sticky gel base. I did cure this base only for 30 seconds just like I did with the white feather. Once I press in the glitter, I will give it a finishing 30 second cure. I dust off any excess, then I go in with a glossy top coat. And the top coat I'm using is designated for my glitter presses. That way I don't have to worry about contaminating my other gel top coats with glitter and then you end up with a piece of glitter in your ombre or your solid background and it is the most frustrating thing so I definitely recommend if you're going to do a glitter press and not just sugar the nail that you have a separate top coat for your glitter. You could always wipe off the brush on your paper towel before you put it back in the gel bottle but sometimes glitter can be stubborn and get stuck in those bristles so. <laughs> I'm just going to move in with my bling application. I did speed this up immensely for you guys because I fiddled with the placement of these gems quite a bit. <laughs> so I used, of course, my McCart rhinestone gel and I will put my bling where I want it, cure it into place, and then I will come in and seal it with my top coat. So I'm going to let you guys watch this and I will be back when I'm sealing with top coat. I 
Now that you've watched me push bling around on a nail for, I don't know, five minutes, <laughs> I just couldn't decide where I wanted it to be or how I wanted it to look, but I'm really happy with it in the end. Now that, that is done, I am cu fully cured it, and now I'm using my matte top coat to get in between and around all of those bling pieces. So I use the brush from the bottle over the entire surface of the nail, then I use my little detail brush and taking my brush in between and around and behind every piece of bling. Now it's really important when you're doing this, especially with a design like this where you're using a matte top coat, that you do not cover the bling. Otherwise it will lose its shine, of course, because it's matte. But if it was a glossy top coat, it would lose that shine as well. So you don't want to go over a top of it with that. It is just going around to help seal it in. But that's all guys. Let me know what you guys think down below. I am absolutely in love with how this set turned out, but I want to know what you guys think about it. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, suggestions, or requests for different sets, let me know down below. I love to hear from you guys. Be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye!